Hello, I'm Denise LaFrance. Coming up next on City Beat, road and bridge work in Las Cruces continues at the Missouri Bridge at Trevis and Don Roser. How long will it take and what will be done just ahead? It's the city's finest versus bravest in what's become an annual event. How Las Cruces police and firefighters play on the football field. If you have street lights out in your neighborhood, there are people you can call to have them replaced. We'll meet one of them in our City Jobs Report. And if you're itching to get out and help someone with some volunteer work, details on a volunteer fair in this month's Ask the Segment might be just the thing you need. Those stories and more in this edition of City Beat. Hi and welcome to City Beat for the month of March. The Missouri Bridge between Don Roser and Trevis has lived its lifespan and is now in need of an update. CLC TV's Jennifer Martinez explains what drivers can expect. This is the sound of Las Cruces expanding. And as you may already know, the bridge over Missouri Avenue between Don Roser Drive and Trevis Drive will be a little more congested for at least the next year. This project is going to directly affect everybody that commutes on I-25 between Loman and University, whether they're just passing through Las Cruces or whether they're residents or business owners. I mean, this is a direct connection not only for inner city, but also to the University and to I-10. The Department of Transportation tells us the bridge is a very sound structure but it still requires an update. At a cost of $15.6 million, it will be torn down and replaced. Right now, traffic between Loman Avenue and University Avenue has noticed the biggest difference. But when peak traffic and peak construction coexist, traffic could back up much farther. The bridge is very stable, as old as it is. It was built in 1968. And most bridges back then were built to, you know, have a lifespan of about 40 years. Well, this has outlived the 40 years. And with the growth of Las Cruces, as indicated, being the second largest city for the state of New Mexico, we have to grow with it. Reconstruction will be conducted in phases. You can keep up with each phase by heading to the city's website, las-cruces.org, and clicking on the NMDOT I-25 Missouri Avenue Bridge Project link. In the meantime, start thinking about an alternate route through this area. The southbound bridge will be the first to come down, and that could start by the end of March. You know, the bad thing that we can always let motorists know is, you know, when it's a work zone like this, their life is just as important as everybody else's. And we have workers that are out there on I-25 and down below, and they're within feet of moving traffic. And that's why we always advise them to just reduce their speed plan for the delays, anticipate delays, and if they can't seek an alternate route. When drivers do return to the area after construction, they'll notice a more colorful look in the area. The artist is Meg Hagman. She's doing the theme of this project, it's going to be the Jaguar. She's done some other work for us, which is on the I-25, excuse me, I-10 Motel Boulevard, where we have the wagon wheel. Then we have the I-10 Amandita and Messia, and, and of course she did the artwork on there as well. She's done some great work for the city, and you know, we're excited to see the end product here for the I-25 Missouri project. The city is working with the Department of Transportation to advise drivers of all the phases of construction. So again, to keep ahead of the changes, head to loss-cruces.org. For City Beat, I'm Jennifer Martinez. Thanks, Jennifer. The project is expected to take 320 working days to complete with wind, rain, and other factors that could mean it would take up to a year and three months. The Munson Senior Center also got an update these past few months. CLC TV has told you about the new multi-purpose room which underwent construction a few months ago. Today seniors are enjoying playing pool in the new addition. The billiards tables were out in the front entrance previous to the addition, now freeing up space for other activities. And speaking of sports, each year the Las Cruces Police and Fire Department set aside one day to battle each other out on the gridiron. Smaller venues in the past have limited the audience, but in recent years, Las Cruces Public Schools have allowed the use of the Field of Dreams. Both teams hope to build this competitive rivalry to pack the stands with people who would contribute to a charity. CLC TV's Adrian Guzman shows us how the game went down. Black, black, black. What's the run? Uh, today, we're just getting together for our annual uh, fire versus police uh, flag football game.
firefighters and police have a normal sort of love for each other, and I don't want to say discontent, but there's a natural rivalry, you know, both being first responders. We go to a lot of calls together. Yeah, the rivalry, I mean, it's not just in football, it's in basketball, it's in any sport. We, I mean, there's always that rivalry between the PD and, and fire, but uh, we always want to be on top because, I mean, fire guys have egos, so do PD guys, so it's just one of those things. We're all about competition. No one likes it. We, we're all, everybody out here is competitive. It's, it's the, and that's kind of where the rivalry comes from between firefighters and police officers. Who's better, who's, you know, who's where. It's a, it's a natural rivalry, yeah, because you keep the trophy and stuff. So, yeah, and then you get to talk crap for the rest of the year. Uh, yeah, there's been some injuries in the past. I know some guys uh, kind of injured some noses and some toes and stuff like that, but nothing too major that I know of. Majority of these guys played before, played sports. We all played against each other. Um, I think it's just we're active out there. I mean, we have to stay physical fit for our job, so I think that helps the competitiveness keep going the whole, your whole career. This is something that we want to build, um, build up from here. Um, thanks to Coach Vito Montes and the public schools, they're allowing us to use this facility. So now that we have a venue like this, our, our hopes is that we invite more of the public, have maybe even some fundraisers or some type of events that, that are, go along with this. Of course, we get competitive. We're all grown men. We're all real competitive, but we want to make it to where the kids enjoy it. And my daughter has been talking about it all year long. So it's, it's a good thing for, for everybody to see their dads playing again. So. It feels good, you know, it's to bring it back home. Last year was a tough fought game when we went into several overtimes, so it was it was worth it this year to come out and everybody wait and uh, get a victory against PD. So bring it back home to fire. Okay, bro. Hey, good hustle, go. everyone. Okay, man. <laughs> <laughs> way to play, way to play. <laughs> My bad. Yeah. Good job, man. Good job, Had a baby. Good job, Dee. Had a baby. Woo! Thank you, Adrian, and great game to all the Las Cruces fire and police crews who took part. New Mexico State University hosts an international festival in March. The university's Office of International and Border Programs will put on the festival Saturday, March 21st from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. at the Las Cruces Convention Center. In November, we showed you a similar event in downtown Las Cruces, which you see here. The Cultural Bazaar explored the diversity in Las Cruces. At the March 21st festival, you can experience music, food, cultural displays of art and fashion from community members around the world. The city of Las Cruces is committed to helping you feel safe in your own neighborhood, and that could come from something like changing a light bulb to illuminate a street. CLC TV spent the day with a street light crew member to see what goes into making city streets brighter. Okay, I'm, I'm Jan Green. I've worked for the city for 12 years now. In March, I'll be here for 12 years. So I'm just about halfway done if I get out at 25. So anyway, um, I'm an electrician with the city, and uh, my job is to make sure that the street lights in the city are all working and, and uh, keep the streets lit and safe. My job is to receive the reported outages from citizens and our administrative assistant sends those to me on the email and, and I'll put them all in a log and, and then log them out to the crews to go out and repair. We've got 8,000, roughly about 8,000 streetlights in the city that we have to keep lit on um, different voltages, different wattages, and um, generally we have maybe anywhere from six a day go out to maybe 20. The high pressure sodium bulbs that we use generally is about four years, so we have to change the lamp every four to five years, I would say. We have two crews that do that on a daily basis. We also stand knockdown poles from vehicle accidents or things like that. So at the end of the day, we make a report and fill out our timesheets, turn them into the supervisor, and you know it depends on what we're doing that day. Um, but at the end of the day, at least we know we're keeping the streets lit and 
people safe and that makes us feel good and that's why I love my job. Thank you, Jan. If you'd like to learn more about a particular city job, please email us at contact at clctv.com. In addition, if you need to report a street light out, make sure you have the number listed on the poll or good directions to the poll, and you can call 575-541-2505. Please leave your name and phone number in case there are any follow-up questions. Doniana area media students get ready to compete in our student PSA contest and don't forget the Country Music Fest. That's coming up in our City Minute. CLC TV's student video PSA contest is open for middle and high school students. Students have a chance to win a GoPro Hero 3 by submitting a 30 second public service announcement with the theme why I love Las Cruces. For full details, go to clctv.com and click on the student PSA image. The 26th annual Baton Death March Memorial is Saturday, March 21st at the White Sands Missile Range. The march is conducted through the desert terrain in honor of service members who defended the Philippine Islands during World War II, some sacrificing their lives for freedom and health. This year, event organizers take registration until March 10th. And we're still a month out from the Las Cruces Country Music Festival, which runs from April 24th through the 26th. Headliners are Kenny Rogers and Dustin Lynch. You can also see the Swan Brothers, Brie Bagwell and Ray Lynn. Get your tickets and see the full list of events at lccountryfest.com or at the Las Cruces Convention and Visitors Bureau. If you've been wanting to do some volunteer work in Las Cruces but didn't know how to go about it, the City of Las Cruces will hold a volunteer fair on Saturday, March 28th. Here's CLC TV's Udell Hill with this month's ASCTA. Hello and welcome. Our guest for this edition of ASTA is Ryan Steinmetz, volunteer coordinator for the City of Las Cruces. Ryan, thank you for joining us on Thank ASTA. you for having me. Now this is the fourth annual volunteer fair that the City of Las Cruces is participating in. Uh, what types of volunteer work can people expect when they go to this fair? So we'll be inviting 40 volunteer organizations from across the city. Um, and so people will be able to talk with those organizations and learn about the different volunteer opportunities that each organization has. So if you're interested in working with animals, you can work with the animal shelter. If you're interested in working with youth, you might be working with Boys and Girls Club or the Girl Scouts of America or our own um, weed and seed program that we have through the city of Las Cruces. Great opportunity, and so this is for a wide range of potential volunteers, correct? Yes, yes, and so we hope that by having all of these organizations together, including the Network Volunteer Center for the City of Las Cruces, people can get connected with meaningful volunteer opportunities across the city. Okay, and uh, typically there's other activities that take place along or at the volunteer fair. What uh, can people expect when they go? So uh, if you have children, you can bring them along because we do have some volunteer uh, folks that are going to be leading some crafts for the kids. They'll actually be making welcome houses for the families of Mesilla Valley Habitat for Humanity. We'll also have some door prizes available and some snacks available to folks if they go and visit five of our tables. Wonderful. I know that it's been very popular in the past, so I can only imagine it's going to be even bigger and better this year as well. Yeah, we've had a, anywhere from between four to 500 people show up to years past, and so we hope to grow this year. Uh, tell us again, Ryan, the day, time, and place of this year's volunteer fair. The volunteer fair will take place in the courtyard of the Brannigan Cultural Center on Saturday, March 28th, from 9 o'clock in the morning until 1 o'clock in the afternoon. So hopefully that time of year we're going to have some good weather. It'd be I nice so to get too. out. Mm -hmm. Okay, Ryan Steinmetz, Volunteer Coordinator for the City of Las Cruces, thank you very much for joining us on ASTA. Thank you. Thanks, Udell. Hopefully many people will head out to the fair to learn more about volunteering opportunities in our city. That's all for this episode of City Beat. Remember, tune in for live City Council meetings right here Mondays at 1 p.m. Plus, all archived meetings and programs can be found on CLCTV.com. Don't forget to like us on our Facebook page. Thanks for joining us. I'm Denise LaFrance.